I want to tell you a little story about uh, how I already knew this place before coming. Because I, well, I don't know if I should. Should I speak through this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it's Reaver, I'll take off the Reaver. Oh, yeah, you can take off the Reaver. <laughs> I see him outside. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've been, this is very wild for me to be here, really, because I've, I've been listening to you for the past 10 years, maybe. And uh, I started doing A Course in Miracles in 2014, and I think you were one of the first teachers to come through and uh, that I really resonated with. And so I've been listening to you, just listening and integrating slowly and practicing and so it's very beautiful to to be here and in one of your speeches i think you mentioned la casa de milagros mm -hmm. sorry la casa de milagros where is this no and i and i found out that it was in mexico and i just pinned it on my google maps just to maybe one day i'll go and i put it there and and when we were doing this tour I got invited by Marcela to come to this community in Mexico, close to Lago Chapala. But I never like put them together. And yesterday I was like checking, where's this place in La Casa de Milagros? I'm like, no way. <laughs> so, so it's very beautiful to be here. Yeah, totally. And so, yeah, I'm very, very blessed to be here. Very honored. Thank you. This place has had lots of music and dance and things in New York, but not for a while. So this is like a fresh breeze of uh -huh. spirits, love blowing through and bringing out the blankets. Mm. To Lovely. <laughs> well, while I'm here, would you like me to sing a little bit or uh, what? Yeah. Is everyone here? Looks like we get a full like scale. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to test? We are. Yeah, I'll test. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have like four houses. They're all on the ground. Yeah. 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 Seven-year-old youth leader is on the grounds. Okay.
All the courage you make me feel Every time I wonder you're by my side You pull me back to what is will flow before your eyes, my dear. Oh, the physical world dissolves into the sky. Come. the colors that shine in me and the time will stop when we're running deep and we grow together very very related to a person well, all of them are because it's one of my biggest inspirations but there's one that I felt that uh, I really felt that it was like a direct communication I just like opened my mouth and all these words started coming out and it's called in the real world <laughs> Get the tissues out. <laughs> and I feel like it's uh, uh, a reminder that that it is possible to to be to be still and and to just become a channel. No? So this one's. One that I really wanted to sing to. <laughs> <laughs> from 
hatred and judgment free from love killing and fighting I'll meet you there in the real world Wake up from a dream And look around you Look around you See what's been missing for you to do And let go of that veil That's stopping you From connecting to everything you knew Everything you know Stop paying attention to the things that make you tired Things that make you bored Now, 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 now the power is yours you are responsible for every situation you create Stop fighting the system The new liberation comes from The silence in you I'll meet you there This is this is our vibe. It's it's like the feeling is like, you know, from this day forth, your your ministry takes on a, a frequency of of joy. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. A deep, consistent joy. You can feel it coming through the music and 
the love, the spontaneous mm. vibe of it all. To give you an idea of how my week went, to, in the middle of the week, I, I had this, I came to a morning meeting and I had all this joy and inspiration. And I said, oh, that's right, this, this Saturday, which was yesterday, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a movie kind of to a global audience of like over a hundred people from all around the world and we, we watch movies together and I let the spirit come through, set it up and then comment during the moody, movie at different parts, key points and things and then we go on. But yesterday's movie was, with commentary, was six hours. We went, <laughs> we went from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Susanna felt, she said, I knew it was going to go till 4. I never know, but so then I came home, had a little late afternoon siesta to make it over to, the, to your concert. But the inspiration was, I, Jason here and Soren, I just said, uh, I need a movie uh, with four people in it. Gandhi, Einstein, C.S. Lewis, and Sigmund Freud. And they did it. They, they, they made a composite movie of those four. It, the movie was two hours and 27 minutes, but with setup and commentary, it was six hours. So we used those bright lights. And the movie was pretty much set in the context of the, the years of Hitler's invasion of, of Europe, World War II, and facing what the world now has with Ukraine and Russia, very similar with uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of civilians women and children being murdered and yet taking us with quotes from the Course, Hero of the Dream and all the great teachings that these four men had given us and their example, and especially with Gandhi and his nonviolence. So that's, that's what we did yesterday. And, but I think the idea came in around Tuesday or Wednesday, Wednesday morning, somewhere in there and then Jason, I said, and Kirsten said, no pressure, he just needs it, <laughs> needs this composite movie. <laughs> and he and Soren edited, uh, there's a new movie that came out on Netflix called Einstein and the Bomb, which is very metaphysical where Einstein, it's all based on Einstein's actual words. Okay. Nothing but his actual words is spoken and written, Einstein and the Bomb. And in it, he says, past, present, future, future are illusion. And then we go into E equals MC squared and then quantum physics. I did a whole bunch of talk about quantum physics with that. Freud, of course, you know, Jesus had to wait a few centuries before some of these words like ego and defense mechanisms were invented to be able to pull from a lot of the the insights that Freud had. And uh, Freud had said, um, all dreams are wish fulfillment and Jesus is 100% in agreement. But the wish is, is actually the wish for death. The ego is a wish for death. Thanatos, Freud called it. So we had that in there and then Gandhi clips at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the movie was Mohandas K. Gandhi. And then C.S. Lewis is a amazing, well-read, just, just a great writer and just dripping with the classics um, from Europe who, who had a conversion experience and saw the light and went from being a, a very staunch, devoted atheist to having these experiences of the light and actually joy in his heart that lifted him into this connection. And so one of the movies was, it was called Freud's Last Session. Freud was, all of them had connections to England too. <laughs> Gandhi went there for his professional university training as a, a solicitor, as a lawyer. Freud escaped from uh, Vienna and went to England and spent his last year and maybe a year and a half or so in England. 
C.S. Lewis was born in Belfast and went to England. And Einstein actually fled uh, his home and and was taken in as a haven in uh, in England. So all four men lived at the same time period. They had to deal with the seeming outpicturing of World War II, and they all had a deep desire to know the truth. And then we took the metaphysics of Jesus to take all of that and whew, go higher. It only took six hours. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, you know, and then we put it up on on uh, all the platforms. We'll go out. I don't know, Soren knows how long it will take to get something like that edited and put out, but it will go out on Apple and Spotify and for everyone who likes to listen to these things. Without the movie itself, but that's probably still, what, about four, four hours or something. <laughs> <laughs> for over four hours of commentary, so. But that's what I, the point I'm feeling is, is this is, this is the, the joy and the spontaneity of God's plan in this moment. Mm. It's always this moment, it's just we're, we're being illuminated, we're being showered with inspiration. It comes through in song and dance, it comes through in talks, it comes through in many ways. Um, probably for the last seven, eight, maybe ten years, we've been following along with the advances in AI, artificial intelligence, which I call AI actualizing intelligence, actualizing the divine intelligence that we actually are. How many people here are directly involved with the practical application of AI for the Holy Spirit? You can show hands. There's the first. They've been working on developing, they made a David AI bot where they just used the data of all my, my teachings over many, many years and they, they trained it. Laverne's been working on this project, how long? Since 2017. Since 2017, she's been working on making a, a bot that, I think, what are they calling it now, forgiveness AI? Yeah. That basically takes you through a guided process of going into your mind and the AI basically starts out with basically how are you feeling and then takes you way the stereo, huh? well, well that was the original one but now it's now there's how many apps are there there's there's forgiveness AI map there's David AI have you heard of David AI that's that's the, the course the spirit, but there's one called David AI, uh -huh. and it basically answers all your Course in Miracles related, <laughs> Andy, all of the Course in Miracles related questions. Yeah, if you go to spirit.ai, if you go to spirit.ai, you'll see a list of our bots. How many? How many do we have? I think there's like three main ones at the moment. Okay. Yeah. And how many languages are they in? Many, actually. I lost count. I lost count, but so these are spontaneous all the major apps languages. That are now come out in all these different languages. Yeah, English, Spanish, Portuguese, Swedish, Swedish, yeah. Russian, Japanese, yeah. Dutch, French. So it's not just the teachings and the metaphysics that came through around the course, but it's also the practical applications. So. You can ask these, like forgiveness AI, you could have any upset of any kind, any kind of upset, and then Laverne has trained this AI meticulously when the AI would start to go to the internet and start to try to pull things off of the process of going back, back, back in the mind. She would see it when it would go off and try to distract away from healing. Even the AI was like trying to avoid coming to the light, wow. and, and, and Laverne was on it. She was like, we need more testers, we, we need more testers, we need to put this out. It's, you know, she was like, it was like a, a, a bronking, a bucking bronco, you were riding it. Like, she's like, stay, staying on the... 
Yeah, you deliver is right out here. Lisa's looking for you. <laughs> yeah. But um, the thing we found with these these AI bots was it all depends on the, the database that you feed it. It's quite spectacular if you are very meticulous with the database. Uh -huh. And so Andy was like, first started off, he was feeding the entire text from Jesus and the Course in Miracles into the database. Quite surprised at, at the answers you got back when that was your, the Course in Miracles was your database. You just turned AI loose from that and then Andy was trying it out with different questions and he was like, Whoa, it's like, it's watching me, it, <laughs> it knows me, it knows, me. It knows my thoughts. And then we've had so many community experiences over so many years that that data started to be fed in. So people that were even interested in applying it to their relationships, applying it to their local communities or families, their, their issues that were coming up with trying to put into practice Jesus' love your neighbor as yourself, the most practical teaching ever as we approach loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And, and so that was kind of fascinating too because of the answers it was giving and into practical application. And then we, because we've been doing this kind of global ministry so long, we have the things you you probably encounter a little bit of it because you have technical things you have to deal with and with travel there's there's a lot of logistics because I know from all my years of traveling there's a huge amount of logistics and then your friend who wasn't feeling where I have another I have a friend Jordi in, in Barcelona too yeah, yeah. but there's this, many Jordi many Jordi <laughs> <laughs> right. I've noticed I, it's like I think of a kind of car or a certain color and then it's everywhere. Uh -huh. One day I, I was going to see a house uh, and I was going with my realtor and it was a big huge parking lot. I said, she said, my car is out in the parking lot and well, we can just follow each other. I said, it's a big parking lot. It's, it's like a mall. Where, where is? She said, well, I'll just go out and find it and we'll find each other. We walked out in this huge parking lot. We both had red cars that were parked facing each other. She had her little crucifix hanging down. She took me to this house. We went out to the road. And as we approached the road in our two red cars, I looked to the right side of the road and every vehicle on the road was red. Oh. And I was like, Oof. And I took, looked to the left and every vehicle <laughs> on the entire road, probably like 20, 25 cars, were all red. And I was like, okay, I think I said something like, whoa, the blood of Jesus, or something like that. I said, it, was of, it was so much red. And then, then we followed her and we went, we were guided to a house which we still live in today. And the address of the house is one. And it's, you can see it as you drive down the road. It's this big, Lisa was like, holy Jesus, all the way down. But this the kind of quantum experiences where we, we have a name or a color or something or a number is just like peppered uh -huh. all around us, you know, those kind of just teaching us that we're all connected, we're all one. So we've actually started to apply, I think at the end of last year I did like seven meetings, seven, seven summits, and we pretty much were in the practical application of, of helping training AI to help us save time so we have more time for prayer and meditation and singing and dancing and less <laughs> <laughs> and then you show up <laughs> and everyone everyone that's it that's what we want <laughs> that's how we want our spirituality to be beautiful spontaneous <laughs> but we're just enjoying it you know we're like and this is perfect that you're you're here because um, everybody here wants to get, live just a, a spontaneous, guided mm -hmm. life, you know. And I can tell that's where your music is coming from. Yeah. I'm just fascinated by being next to you and hearing you. 
they're listening to the voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it's been a for me, it's been a very very intense process to get to to being able to express myself like this. Gone through a lot of um, times where I really didn't believe that I can do it, and. Um, I was telling the story yesterday in the concert that precisely it was Mexico, uh, the beginning of, a, of an opening for me uh, in 2012, when I was, I felt like very depressed with my life and felt like I was in a loop. And um, I felt like there must be, there must be another way. I can't be like living like this all my life and, and feeling this, this, this nonsense. I, I want to feel joyful. I want to feel happy. I want to feel free, you know? So I decided to, to go travel the world and I came to Mexico without like a, without any return ticket. Just with my backpack, a little guitar. And by that time I was, I was singing, but I was, I wasn't singing my own songs. I was singing songs that I loved from like uh, all these jazz soulful songs. And, but I was very shy to, to share my own, my own stories, no? I didn't know how to express it. So it took a long time for me to like start meeting people that, that really had overcome this, this obstacle and were like shining. And I was feeding from all these experiences. And, and by the time I got to South Africa from 2012, four years later, no, two years later, I arrived to South Africa. And I meet this, I meet this brother that was in a very similar position than me. He wanted to make his own music, but he came from the business world and he felt like he wasn't good enough. But he recorded himself like his the, some songs that he had and recorded himself with a microphone and a guitar in his bedroom. And when I got to meet him, he showed me like what he was doing. And when I listened to that, my head really exploded because it made me understand that um, you can do whatever you want. If you feel it and you put love into it and care, it evolves through time, it grows and expands, and it becomes something incredibly beautiful. No? And so that, that relationship with, with my, my brother Yannick was super empowering for me. And we spent two years in South Africa, like traveling the country and playing everywhere, in the streets and everywhere, barefoot, singing, like five, five men singing, like, Wow, African tunes, you know, it was very empowering. And, and then after that, I, I, I came back home to Barcelona and I started like wah, vomiting all this information in, in form of, of music, no? And that has led me here to, to be able to share back to Mexico, exactly, like 12 years later. Yeah. You came in here in 2012, and then I came the next year, in 2013. I'd been traveling all over the world, and I started hearing Jesus. I'd be in China and Australia, different places, and I kept hearing Jesus use two words in my mind. And I, I, I listened, I'd say, what? It was urban, urban mystic, yeah. urban yeah. ministry, yeah. urban... <laughs> It's turned into urban mystic. <laughs> urban ministry, and I would say, wait a minute, what? What is an urban ministry? I've been in London, Paris, Beijing, Shanghai. I've been in Sydney, Melbourne. I've been in, you know, Delhi, India. I've been in a lot of urban ministry. But when I came down here, which is close to Guadalajara, I, I didn't realize, but it seems like this is where our little community was to grow and flourish. So I, I actually had a friend from, from up in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, who was living down here with a partner, and he said, I'll organize two 
all-day gatherings for you in, in Guadalajara. So I said, okay. So we went to Guadalajara, did the first all-day gathering, and he came up to me and he said, I'm sorry, I totally blanked on the second one. I said, you blanked on it? And he said, I just forgot. I said, so this, this is it? And he said, yeah, this is the one. So I said, okay. So I came up here to this area to stay with a uh, he had a friend who was a minister, I stayed with him and his wife. And then before I flew back to the States, um, I was there, there was a real estate book, and I saw this place. So on the way to the airport, I had them come and show it to me, came in here, and then everything unfolded. And I ended up coming back when we, you might have heard of the Shriners, Shriners Burn, Burns Institute, they help children who are burned. It was a, a, a husband and wife who had owned it, and the husband had passed away, and the wife was selling it. So, all these miracles began in 2013. And when I came down, when we were buying the house, I was the only one here, so I was just walking around the grounds. There was really no furniture, and we had, at that time, used all the money we had to buy it, so it was, I said, it'll all show up. Furniture, and then people, and so, yeah, and interesting that you had put that little on your maps. And here we are, yeah. Mexico, Jesus has really been using that symbol. Just trusting, just like, let, let life carry you. Let life show you the way without having to, like a career, career trying to build it, or shape it or form it. you just barefoot, singing in South Africa with your brother <laughs> and friends. That's so organic. It's just such a, a, a witness. Yeah, for me, this, this, this journey that took me to South Africa, um, and coming out of this intense depression of not knowing how to communicate with myself. Um, it was it was wild to 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 understand that I internally I process things like almost in slow motion. And sometimes the world seems to be in fast forward. <laughs> super intense and me inside I'm like <clears throat> and being able to to travel on my own I started like making decisions from this space like what do I want to do today okay today I feel like taking a walk in this town I go do this and things start happening no? you meet this people that take you to this place, da, da, da. all these synchronicities start happening. But it's they started happening when I started to live a, in a slow tempo. And then after this journey, I went back home. And again, I started like feeling again this rush in this. Oh, I'm losing my I'm losing my flow, you know. So this is something that I really try to like <clears throat> to 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 be with every day like I take things slow I'm going to make this decision but I need time to think about it to feel it and then respond but when I respond quickly to questions and and what do you want you guys want to do things start becoming boring really boring and when I allow to like feel into what I really want to do and, and, and I communicate, then all this happens, you know, this magic. Yeah. Uh, we can all take that to heart. <laughs> <laughs> Over the past week or two, maybe, if we have a roving mic, but there was like huge undoings around responsibility. I think that Push, push, push is a society of the world is is tied into a belief in like personal responsibility, striving, uh -huh. driving, trying to build something, make something, trying to do something to 
to the world or in the world to try to change the world and that slow, easy, relaxed feeling is just the Spirit's guidance saying, come here with me, abide with me and just let it all unflow, unfold and that's kind of like I know we've had a few different things. I guess Susanna and Andy, you took a trip to Puerto Vallarta and they were going to, we were calling it an AI admin summit. And then when Susanna got back, uh, how many days was it? Five, Five days. Everything around the, what they thought was they were going to do came in a download in about 15 minutes. And then they just played <laughs> in Puerto Vallarta for the rest of the five days. <laughs> it got accomplished in. 15 minutes, maybe you want to share about that, because that's what sounds like what this is about. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. It was actually just a very deep prayer to relax and trust and let go of time and just be taken into a different way of thinking. And, uh, and yet we had this assignment, like AI admin, how can we merge and just save a lot of time, really. But closer to the time of the trip, more and more it felt like, wow, that's, that's just a, a small part of the trip. It's like much bigger. <laughs> it's really just more about the connection and just finding that place of rest. And so, yeah, we, we went and just really had to trust, like, just see if we hear any prompts like about the specific assignment and they want nothing okay so let's just trust relax and enjoy go walk on the beach and day two same <laughs> so just trust deeper relax deeper and just yeah really focus on the connection and the joy and just that it will be shown and then i think maybe the third or the fourth day we all of a sudden, I don't even know how it happened, but it, the thoughts came in so quickly and it's like, oh, boom, boom, boom. Let's look at that, that, that. 15 minutes later, it's like, oh, I think that was it. <laughs> that was not the reason we went. That's like way too small for that to be the reason for the trip. So I, I feel like for myself, it's just been this huge experience of a contrast, such a contrast and being taken out of time and into that flow of the moment and i think that's where for myself like that's what i want to live from so when you share that i like really resonate with what you're sharing and then how to integrate that into day-to-day -day life or something here and so it's but it's been very powerful experience just like a total shift with what do i value more and yeah Yeah, it feels like it's actually just still very much integrated, but such gratitude for finding that space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of a line from a John Lennon song, Life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. <laughs> and you know, it's funny how it's, it's almost like we don't even have to f figure out how to integrate it into daily life. It's like it itself is life. It's the, it has that pace to it. It's very soft and gentle, very intuitive. It's, it's life itself, it's the, the presence of, of God in our heart, and it's, it's just showing us. It's, and, and we have to make that our top priority. I, I think I had the same kind of experience when I would, my early days of traveling, whenever I would go back to my hometown, I would feel things start to speed up. And I guess maybe I had unconscious expectations or 
Now I would just say I had still lingering past associations in my mind that were kind of like quicksand, that I, I would try to dance over them and they would catch my toes and, oh, here I am again. But then the more I, I went out on like you with these big travels and trips, then I just felt like I was letting go into the stream, like it was more like a twig in the river. And the river would wind and bend and bubble and do whatever it was doing, and I was just in the current. And I, it, was, it was very involuntary too, it didn't feel like I had to figure things out or make plans. Lots of synchronicities, just things showing up. But I think what I'm hearing from what you're saying, Alex, is just the, the permission and the determination and the spaciousness to allow yourself to be carried like that. That seems like that's the, that's the huge lesson for all of us. Even our dog Benito is relaxing here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I mentioned his name. <laughs> He's off to chase a bird or something. But yeah, it, it's so glorious because it feels like that is life itself. We're touching life itself in us and we don't really have to try to fit it into the world. We just have to be in it, be it. Yeah. It's sweet. <laughs> Sweetness. Sometimes I wonder though when there's <clears throat> like situations like when you were mentioning now no, this this war on Ukraine, things like that are very rough. Um, like I, I had the experience to be in Israel the day before this last war started. <clears throat> so the day before Hamas came in and and there was this terrorist attack. And so I was in this whole thing and I was like so confused, like how can, how can this happen? I was lucky enough to be able to leave the country the next day. But then when I left and I came back to Barcelona, I started like hearing all this counter attack and this, this situation. Oh, that's very, very, I don't know, very strange. And so how to stay in the flow when all this aggressive uh, energy is happening. How to not um, unbalance yourself, no? How can you be, a, how can you help in these situations? Yeah, I know when I went to a lot of different countries, but probably about, maybe, probably about, maybe 10, 12 years ago, I went down to Colombia and at the time I went to Colombia, um, people there hosted me out in the, the rural areas outside of Cali, out in the mountains, and, and um, they did kind of say, here's the context of what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a civil war in our country that's been going on for many years. It's the, there's the military, there's the paramilitary, there's guerrillas that come down from the mountains and kidnap our children and do anything. So, so it was interesting that Jesus had kind of sent me right into a country that was dealing with a kind of a civil war with like three different sides to it going on. And um, there was all, there was a protest going on. Sometimes one day I would wake up and they would say, oh, we were going to go into Cali, but there's massive protests. The streets are filled with huge protests, and so we don't feel it's, it's safe to go there. And I said, okay. And, and there were situations where I would go to course groups, like over in Bogota, and they'd say, well, you're going to meet a woman who's a course facilitator who's, whose son was kidnapped by the guerrillas. So when she's doing her lessons every day, that's her main issue she's working at. Her, her child was abducted and taken away. 
And so it was, it was an, more what would seem much more extreme than many other of my travels around the United States and Canada. It seemed just, it's the same world, but it's more apt to be perceived as extreme. One time I was in uh, communist China with my friend Francis and we were doing a little tour of three cities and we were going to do our final stop in Beijing. And just like you did your final concert in Mexico yesterday, it was, going to, it was a hotel in Beijing, a big hotel, it was supposed to be 200, 250 people there and everything. The night before, the, um, the organizers came and said, well, there's, there's three different teachers for three different spiritual pathways, and one of them mentions A Course in Miracles a lot, and the, the government has, has detained, they've taken uh, these three teachers that have just been teaching similar things to what you're teaching, uh, and basically we feel it's not safe. We're in Beijing, we're in the capital, where the government is, you know, this is to do a public gathering uh, in front of uh, the gov communist government. This is not good. They say, I totally trust you. I said, you're the organizers, you know, you. It's, uh, they said, we know we put this out and people are supposed to be coming to this big hotel and everything, but they said, we do not feel comfortable with it. I said, well, you're the, it doesn't matter to me. You can do whatever you want. And they said, well, we, we do not feel for you to be here. This was like midnight and they were telling me this. They were saying, we want to move you to another uh, hotel right now. And I said, okay. So me and my friend Francis said, we'll go whatever, whatever you, you know, we trust you completely. You know, it's, it's all about this moment. It's about the connection. It's about flowing with what's given, not even expectations around what was planned and organized. And so when they took us to the other hotel, they, the, it was a big team of organizers, like maybe eight or ten organizers, and they were like, they started to have a sad look in their face, like, oh my God, we were so looking forward to this, and we don't even mind that it's canceled, but we're just sad. And I said, well, well, what would you want? What would you want? Let's pray together. What would you want? They said, they said, well, we just want to be together with you tomorrow. <laughs> And I said, oh, that's so sweet. I said, uh, I know nothing about Chinese culture. I said, do they have any hot tubs in Beijing? And they said, we have the largest indoor hot tub facility, pools, spas and pools in the world. We even have a restaurant in there, there's trees. <laughs> I said, that's perfect, so we could just spend all day in the tubs together. They were like, yeah. yeah. And I said, and there's a restaurant there. Yeah, so there's food. I said, we just hang out all day and be together and, and enjoy, enjoy this. This is our last day, the last day of the tour. So let's, let's do that. And they were so happy. And then I, I took it that when Jesus says all things with work together for good, there are no exceptions except in the ego's judgment that, that, that to stay in the, the purpose, the connection, regardless of the situations that seem to be happening, it helped me start to realize that, that my, my choice of what I perceive is, is always there. I can either see it with the spirit and feel the unified connection of everything, or I can let past thoughts come in, danger, warning, fear, for safety, and all those things. So when I first took my trips to rural Colombia during the guerrilla warfare that was going on there, I had never seen so many guns and pistols and rifles close up. I mean, when they took me out away from Kali into the, the areas, everybody, there were guns everywhere. It was like a 
I'd seen more guns on television and movies, but not <laughs> up close. But to me, I had this feeling of joy that everybody was playing their part perfectly and that underneath everybody is a deep prayer for love and connection. So I remember you know, rifles over their shoulders and everything. I would go by and I would wave to them and they would, they would wave to me. <laughs> I went to Argentina. I was in downtown Argentina, Buenos Aires, and there were, it was like the changing of the guards they have up in England, where it was a bank, I think, and two guards were being relieved by two more guards for another shift. And I was watching the guards, and I was like, this is fascinating. And the guards went up and they kissed each other with these big rifles. <laughs> they kissed each other on the cheeks. And, that's adorable. That's just absolutely adorable. I would tell my host, should you see that? And they say, oh yeah, that's, that's customary when they change the... I say, amazing. So, it started to be like that, even when I would find myself in what people would describe as, um, as kind of dangerous situations. I mean, the Middle East is kind of, has a reputation and that was like an un, what the world would call an unprecedented um, terrorist attack. And I, I also heard about the music festivals that were going on and all that. I was reading that too. But I did find that, that wherever I went, it would be more just trusting that it was working together for good. I would be off sometimes in in outside of Buenos Aires, where there'd be extreme poverty, economy collapse, financial collapse in Argentina, with the pesos going down to almost nothing. Um, women and children, I was off in the rural areas, I met a group of women and they, they could not afford to buy in Cursa de Milagros. Later on, Jesus would have me link up with a with a man in um, in Bogota, who was a businessman, and we would collaborate to to get a uh, the, the Course in Miracles um, print um, books, the or the printing press down in a factory in in rural Colombia to distribute and Curso Milagro's books all over. But it was just the orchestration that was given through guidance. And when I was meeting with the, the mothers, they could not afford, there was no course book, and they had z Xeroxed one chapter from the text. And that's all they could do was pray and read that one chapter and pass around the, the Xerox copy. And I could feel that the call was so strong, and I thought, wow, I'm privileged to be able to be used in a way that can teach guidance and unified perception. But it was a convincing, just like coming out of depression for you took a lot of convincing and a lot of building of confidence that to me, I began to start to see that everything was happening for me, for my forgiveness lessons. It was all synchronized with my daily lessons practice. And I did go through a lot of scenes uh, that one time I, I was flying from the, I think the East Coast to, I was supposed to fly to LAX, catch a flight to uh, Hawaii to meet a Jewish man who I'd never met. And when I got to LAX, I was in the airport and I had to take a bus to another terminal. So I hopped on the bus and I thought I was going to another terminal, but the bus driver drove outside of LAX and we were all like, what's happening? Similar thing happened when I was in China. I was flying towards Shanghai to catch a flight the next day back to the United States and the captain came on and he was speaking Mandarin, but I had my translator right next to me so I was saying, What's he saying? He's saying, David, that the plane has been diverted. I said, the plane is diverted. 
<laughs> for most people the word diverted, you don't like your flights <laughs> to be diverted. Diverted. It got went to Ningbo and a whole bunch of miracles happened from me being diverted away from the city where I was supposed to be going and I had so many miracles happen and the same thing happened that day in LAX when we were going towards the terminal, we go, the bus driver takes us outside of the airport, takes us to a parking lot and we're all in the bus going, what's happening? What's what's going on? They said, there's, there's a gunman who's just, it's a mess mass shooting happening in the terminal that we were going to <laughs> and we were taken, <laughs> diverted <laughs> on the bus away. I had thought before, I, I thought, maybe I could walk it and then I thought, no, it's too far, I'm going to take the bus, <laughs> off to the bus <laughs> and then got diverted completely from that. It's very similar to, like I showed that movie yesterday and there was a scene where Gandhi's in South Africa, with his dark skin, walking down the streets in probably Cape Town or Johannesburg, one of the big cities, and he's walking with his friend, some of you remember from the movie Gandhi, who's a priest, who's got the white collar on and everything, and, and a group of boys, a group of three boys, they, they started calling him uh, by derogatory nicknames because of his color of his skin and telling him as the, as the priest and him are walking on the sidewalk, get off the pavement you colored, get off the sidewalk and they had some derogatory words and everything and the priest was like, let's, 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 let's go the other way, let's, let's go the other way and, and Gandhi said, no, I think there are times when we, we have to be courageous, I think of Christ, he says to the priest. Christ said, if someone smites you on one cheek, you should turn the other cheek. He said, I think, I believe that he was trying to teach a lesson that you have to go forward in faith and trust, kind of, and courage. And the priest is horrified. And Gandhi just keeps walking straight to the to the, the three guys that are calling him names and saying, get off the pavement. And then as they get up, one of the guy's mother comes out before there's any kind of physical confrontation and says, where are you still down there? You get away, get out here where I can see you. You're supposed to be gone to work. And the whole scene shifts with Gandhi fearlessly going along, and the man comes out, talks to his mother, comes back over, stands right in front of Gandhi, and Gandhi out of his mouth comes, I think you'll find that there's room for all of us. And the guy just, and then Gandhi steps forward. And there's a passage in the Course where it says, Jesus says, if you'll be a miracle worker for me, I will arrange time and space for you. That's nothing that none of us were raised with. Arranging time and space, that's... And yet, I've had so many experiences over these last three decades where it, it actually feels like the whole day was arranged, synchronized, all of time and space was moved for the daily lesson. And then when I got deeper into just my calling and my mission, there's been so many miracles, so many seeming arrangements of time and space that I, I couldn't even write a book, it would be too long, it would be a, like an encyclopedia volume of all the experiences where, where really nothing that we need is provided. We're, we're not here to get something from the world, we're here to be the bringers of light. We're here like Gandhi to show the light, to shine the light of love and equality. And some of the situations the world will judge as emergencies or extreme, uh, very extreme conditions, but through the miracles they show us that we're like carried along and that really nothing is lacking in any situation. It's, it's our own holiness that we're meant to recognize and to shine. And then, 
so many of the experiences have been where I just trust. One time I was in, uh, I was down here in this area, and I was getting ready to go back to the United States, and then go over to Europe to do a 10-country tour of Europe, and then fly to South Africa to do a, a tour through South Africa. And then, the day before I'm to leave, uh, I, I went to the dentist, and my de young-looking dentist, he just looks at my teeth, and he's in the, and he's got, he said, you need a root canal. I said, a root canal? I don't have time for a root canal. I've got a world tour. I'm leaving tomorrow. He said, oh, you need a root canal. He said, now. And he said, you need one now. I said, I think it's her bot. I'm leaving tomorrow. So I came back over here to La Casa and talked to a friend of mine named Judy. She took me to a friend, alternative kind of healer that had some kind of a quantum machine. <laughs> That's easier than the dentist. <laughs> Just use a quantum machine. So I go there and I do, are there any things to hook up to my fingers or anything? I said, no, no, the quantum machine doesn't need to be attached to you. <laughs> so, okay. So I go there and then the quantum machine prints out all these things of what's going to happen in my life and what's with everything possible about the body and everything like this. And then the woman who was working with the quantum machine, she said, um, she and my friend Judy, the realtor, she, they started bursting into laughter and I'm like sitting there with the quantum machine going next to me, two ladies laughing and I go, what's so funny? What's so funny now? And they, they go, well now the machine is printing out things that, that, you, that are good for you. And I said, so what's so funny? What are you seeing on the printout? And they said, it said, David is very compatible with cow's milk. I said, well, why are you laughing? They said, 200 people come in and the machine will say lactose intolerant. And the machine's now saying cow's milk is good for David. And they, the woman just burst into laughter because of this. And then it said, oh, it's now it's revealing the percentage of your life's purpose that you have accomplished. What percentage of your life's purpose? This is what a quantum machine does. It. And then they, <laughs> they started bursting laughing. I said, now what's so funny? They said, the woman said, I've never seen this. The machine is saying 100%. I've never seen the machine say you've accomplished 100% of your life's purpose. <laughs> you know, it was covering everything. And so, at the end of all that, I said, well, I've got to go on a tour, and my dentist has just... <laughs> has <laughs> just told me that I need a root canal. And they said, oh, we have some, they gave me, here we'll sell you a bottle, like it was this big, of colloidal silver. I said, okay. So, <laughs> I took the bottle, I went home, I packed it in my carry-on. Not a good idea. Uh, I go to the airport to, uh, to fly. I think I had one more flight to do before I flew to the United States. And my friend Armel, who was from Belgium, she's like the lady who's at the inspections, you have to go through security. She opens it up and she's like, she, I had wrapped with bubble wrap this tall bottle of colloidal silver. And she's like, the woman's like, away. They're not going to let me. So I sat down and I said, she said, you cannot go through security with this. And I said, all right. So I went over, I found a little bench and I chugged <laughs> the entire bottle, the whole thing. They were, they were telling me, at the, I think the lady with the, uh, with the, the quantum machine had said, take, take one tablespoon for 12 hours or something. And I thought, this is Jesus. This is, this is a mixture of magic and miracle. My dentist said I needed 
a, I need root canal, and Jesus has given me a quantum machine and a reading, and now he's given me a... So I sat there and just... <laughs> in 20 minutes, I go, and Armel was next to me, she was like, you're going to kill yourself before we get to the plane. This is like suicide. I said, I never read the instructions anyway. <laughs> so I go, 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 go. Still, because it's quite a few ounces, I don't know, 30, 30 ounces, I don't know what. So finally I'm getting near the end of it and she's like, I can't believe you're doing this. I cannot believe it. And I said, I think this is going to handle my root canal. For now, it feels intuitive, like this, is the, this was the, the magic miracle thing that I was praying for. So I did it, and then I gave the bottle to the empty bottle to the security lady. She threw it away, went on my flight, came back, went to the United States. I think I went to Utah, went over. I know Kirsten and Jason were with me with everything. We did, we did a 10 country tour of Europe. Then we flew to South Africa, and I think we were in Johannesburg when I started to feel something in my mouth. I thought, mm, this feels kind of weird. I got some weird things going on. I said, well, my dentist did tell me back in Mexico that I needed a root canal immediately. So I just talked to uh, our host, I think her name was Patricia, and, and I just said, well, I think I I think I need to see a dentist. And she said, sure. She said, do you have any insurance or anything? I said, no, nothing that, nothing that would work in South Africa. She said, I'll put you on my insurance. Well, that's, I don't know that I've ever heard of that, but... So she went in and she talked to them said, this is my friend, he's, he's going to be on my insurance. And then see a specialist, the dentist. So I go into the dentist. And this woman, and she goes in there, and she's examining and everything. She's like, you need a root canal. <laughs> this was weeks later, and I said, I've been told that. <laughs> and she said, uh, it's going to have, have to be done in two parts. I have to kind of drill down and inject this stuff down there. And then she said, how long are you in Johannesburg? And I said, I think it's maybe four or five days, maybe maybe like four days, then I'm off on, the, on my tour. She said, okay, I'll start now. And she drilled down, put the medicine in whatever, came back a few days later, she did the second part. But it's, there's been so many of those experiences where it just feels like everything is handled and arranged without my effort. There's just been so many that have happened. But it's like you were talking about, kind of going in within and just being in that real relaxed place. And it's only the ego that tries to judge certain situations. And, the, and of course, from the worldly perspective, they would say, Wow, Alex, you were very fortunate with the Gaza Strip experience. But I always feel there's no accidents, that we're always in the right place at the right time, and, and we always have actually what we need to perform our function. And then when I think of it that way, then I think, oh, I just have hundreds, really thousands of experiences where it just felt like everything just worked out. Even though there was initially sometimes a, a, a fear or a doubt sometimes. So I, I really think it's, it's all a convincing job, like the Holy Spirit, trying to convince us that we're spirit, that we always have been spirit and we're not a body. And that the past, I think the guidance part gets stronger and stronger where we start to realize that once we're just intuitive and willing to be 100% intuitive and 0% analytical, then things get, start to get very joyful. But to the extent we still fall back on some of those linear interpretations, then it's, it can, that brings up fear immediately when that happens. But it's just an opportunity to, to come back, choose again. So I do share a lot of the parables because people 
have a lot of practical questions, and that's what came up in the movie when C.S. Lewis and Freud were together. They were bantering back and forth, you know, about God and why does God allow these things, and you know, the really good deep questions. So we we took that as an opportunity to really go deep within, and and to just trust. I mean, the community is just a group of people that have come. There's so many countries represented here at this gathering, just, I don't even know how many. It's, I've quit counting, but... Just in the first row, they're all from different countries. Then different, different, yeah. Holland, Ireland, Canada, it just goes on and on. Argentina, yeah, Australia, but, but it's a vibrational thing. Like we found each other with a frequency. And, and the funniest thing is if we sit around and we talk, we would think, I would have, Lisa used to say it to me, I would never have chosen in a million years to to be with this kind of group of people, we would say when we were at the monastery. And, and there's no way you can even look back to the past to, to figure it out, because it's, it's just been like a symphony of this high frequency that's, that's drawn us together. And there's been so many movements and shifts, like in the symphony, there's different parts, shifts in the symphony, but, but Again, that is kind of like Jesus saying, Who is my father, mother, sister, brother? He that does the will of our Father in heaven is father, mother, sister, brother. He was describing it like a frequency even back then. Because he was saying, Mothers will be turned against daughters in my namesakes, and fathers will be turned against sons, and people were what is he talking about? Those are passages in the Bible that people don't even like to quote. But I think we just saw the new episode of The Chosen, two episodes down in Guadalajara. Was it a few days ago? And and that it was that sorting out of letting our frequency just be carried, lifted higher and higher and higher, and letting go of all judgments of the form. Because the, the form judgments are, are what's being undone. It's just the past. To be free of past associations, and that's the music that's even pouring through you. You know, that's the, the love that everyone felt at the concert last night. Everyone was just swaying and dancing, and we've been down here since 2013, but we didn't even know that. You brought a whole new group of people. We were like, Oh. Jason was like, look at this crowd. <laughs> we, we've been down here, we had, you know, they just, the frequency, mm -hmm. they just came from your frequency and, and you invited us and we were there from the frequency and, and it's very celestial, it feels, you know, very mystical and very celestial. Not something that you can put in a box mm -hmm. at all. Happily. <laughs> <laughs> Not something that you can plan, no. Not at all. Uh, I was, I was, lis I was hearing a question, but I haven't formulated it yet. But it's something. So we we say. There's this universal frequency in the world from many different traditions, religions, that says we are one. No. Would you say that uh, um, letting go of the form and the world is uh, to fully believe this? and fully live from this space without any associations to my personhood. 
Like, do you do you still uh, identify with David? When you were singing that real world song, that just was my heart chords were just strumming because that to me that's what the happy dream or the real world is, and so there's there's such laughter in the mind because anything that seems to be the slightest contraction is it can't. It can't hold on. There's nothing to hold on to anymore. It has no foundation. So like there's this inner sense of laughter. It's like Jesus laughing, you know, at, at anything. Like there's no serious moments. There's just this ha ah, ah, ha, this little laughter <laughs> underneath, you know. So it, it started years ago where I felt like I had a little bird on my shoulder that was chirping away, giving me commentary on movies and teachers and everything else, discernment little discernment bird, but now it just feels like it's just this one big happy dance and and this like Miguel Ruiz, you know, one of his four agreements was don't take anything personally. That's really the, what we're in now. We're in the, that phase of of the dance and not taking anything personally. And then even if something arises, it you, you notice it very quickly and it's not some big drawn out drama or, or uh, depression or, you know, some of the things would be so long, like getting stuck in things, but it, it, it just doesn't have anything to hold on to. And I feel like that's, that's what we're, we're into now. We're here to live it, to fully live it, to be it, not to, you know, speculate you know, or pontificate, but really to be, yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's a, it's a gift. It's like, open the gift. Yeah. What an opportunity. Yeah. It's a play, no? Yeah. Yeah, it does feel. When feel. you were saying about the soldiers that you were like, it's like this innocence, no? Yeah. That kids have. Yeah. Going back to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really a surrender of, of into this state of really not knowing anything about the world, being really kind of clueless. And uh, like a couple days ago, when we went to see the Jesus, the, the two um, first episodes of season four, Afterwards, we were just skipping through the mall like a bunch of little children, this huge mall in Guadalajara. And, and Emily was saying, Cheesecake Factory. I'm hearing Cheesecake Factory. And uh, Lisa's going, Mickey D's, McDonald's. <laughs> we don't have a McDonald's here in this area, you know. So we don't get out too much. So, she's, so we got down there and Jason was saying, I'm open, I can go for anything, but already Kirsten, Susanna, and Emily had gone along, gone into Cheesecake Factory, so we're standing outside. I said, yeah, go ahead, if you want to get me something, I'm going to go over to the Cheesecake Factory, but if you want to get something. So they go over to buy food from McDonald's and take it into another restaurant, wow. and, <laughs> and, uh, Places sweat bullets. What are we doing? I said, yeah, Mickey get me a, I said, I said, if you go to Mickey D's, get me, get me a vanilla, milk, vanilla milkshake. So then I go into Cheesecake Factory and order a glass of milk, oh. leche, <laughs> and then I've got a, a Maltado <laughs> coming there, and we're sitting there, and then they were talking, we were outside before we went in, and they said, are we going to really bring McDonald's into this restaurant and just come in with our McDonald's bag and everything? And I said, I said, they love us so much. <laughs> I said, at the cheese, the cheese bag, I said, they love us so much, they'll just be so glad for all this to be in there, even if there's McDonald's. And sure enough, I was sat there in the Cheesecake Factory, here comes this big bag of McDonald's and everything. And they go, oh, we checked, yeah, we checked at the front. We said, we've got McDonald's, can we come in here? And they said, ah, 
go ahead. It was that we love you. They could care less if we were bringing McDonald's into their, their restaurant. And then the waiter was coming around. We didn't even hide it when we pulled out all the stuff from McDonald's. It was all over the table. And he's like coming up, can I take that for you? He's taking all the McDonald's. This is like, this is the state of mind where you expect only miracles and you know, that was my reply was, can you take McDonald's into the... I said, they love us so much. That was, that was my, my answer. And sure enough, they, it, it played out that way too, it was that way. And then Jason had a kind of a healing of that because he said when he was younger, he, he took some food into a restaurant in Canada and were kicked out. <laughs> he still had the past to so I said, there it is, that's what this is all for. <laughs> so the, the, it looked like the owner was coming up, and I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> he's coming to kick me out again. And he comes up, he's like, would you like butter with your corn or something? <laughs> I ordered a glass of milk, the three of them got a salad, and then we had McDonald's fries coming in and quarter pounders and everything like this. And, and then Lisa's like, you know, Kirsten and I were just here, they have the best corn, <laughs> bowl of corn. Okay, we said to the waiter, we want a corn, two, two corns, three corns, four corns. And another corn is better. And, and more, they kept bringing this corn and butter, and then Jason was waiting to get his corn in it. Corn bowls were being passed around. It was just, we just have so much fun. <laughs> Actually. Hey, <I'm> like, <laughs> children of the corn. <laughs> As we're leaving. <laughs> and then JP's like, I think that's a horror movie. <laughs> but It was a heel. It's, it's, it's like a vibration, it's a frequency when you're in it. There's a lot of laughter and joy and, and it just spills out over the, over the whole table. Even behind the table there was mirrors. So we were sitting eating, looking at ourselves in the mirror and Lisa thought there was a whole other group behind us. there was a crowd behind us. Because the mirror was there. She could see out of the side there was all these images and she thought, oh there's a whole big crowd behind us. And I said, I said no that's us. <laughs> so it's like a cat, you know, looking in the mirror. But you do get more and more clueless, but, but also it's, it's, everything is handled too, because we've had to navigate through lots of things over the years, but we do pray, listen and follow. We really do, it's a habit now for us, we, we pray and, and we, we just become more and more and more intuitive and then the more intuitive you become, you start to realize that the whole world you see is a reflection and an orchestration of what's going on in your mind. So, I call it the divine order, then you start to see it all as this real world, this happy dream, this dance. And, and then even things that still can be talked about, like the the war in uh, Ukraine and different things, you start to, that was part of the six hour movie yesterday, I was saying that, that Jesus is saying that the world that you perceive is nothing more than the reflection of the world that you believe, the thoughts that you believe about yourself. And he said, if you believe in a private mind with private thoughts, which is what personhood, really individuality is, then you'll see a private world that cannot be shared. Only the thoughts of God can be shared. So you're just perceiving your own thoughts. And you can only change your mind about that and change the thoughts, release the attack thoughts like in Lesson 23. And so, at first it starts out as an idea, but the more you really give yourself to it every day, then you start to feel that the world is, is subjective, it's really, it's just what your emotions are, your daily emotions. But as you, you go through a purification process, then there's just lots of joy and laughter and, and 
Yeah, when we, we don't take too many outings, but when we take an outing, it's, it's a lot of joy. Just even the traffic, you know, yeah. it's, it's quite a, a it's fun, quite a fun trip. I was going one time, Herpy was taking her first drive here in Mexico City traffic, and we're zipping along on the highway, she's driving, and, and I noticed very quickly that that was, there's the exit right there for, for the airport. And so she, whoo, on a, a full three, four lane, she goes, we go, meow, <laughs> just across. We're, first we're like, oh, okay, made it good. You know, <laughs> she's like, you never so forget. You need to go to the right, wait, now. Now, and she just, <laughs> she just, but we, we do that a lot too. Like if I'm out driving and there's traffic coming both ways, I'll just look one way and I'll say somebody, to say somebody, you check the other way. And then I just totally trust and rely on them 100%. I'm not even looking, I'm just, they're like, go, now. I just, I just go, don't even look to see if the traffic's coming. It's just like the Matrix. I can, I can guide you, but you must do exactly as they say. Go, now, lift, raise up, do it slowly, you know. Because you get into that rhythm of listen and follow, and the trust grows stronger. And you actually feel like you're just living intuitively from your heart. And that the world is just reflecting that. But you're not really putting faith in your five senses. Because I've had so many experiences. One time I was in Roscoe, New York with Ken Wapnick and Gloria, and it was a weekend. They were doing like a, a retreat, and it was the weekend, and they had this big lodge, but on the weekend it was, it was completely vacant and empty. And so uh, I was walking by, and I heard Jesus say, go into the lodge, and I thought, I don't even know, it looks empty, I don't even know if it's open. I said, go in. So I go, the door opened. So I walked into what I thought was a completely empty big lodge. And then they had, this was, shows how many years ago, it was like a phone booth. Phone booth in the lodge. So it said, go in, go over to the phone booth. And I went over to the phone booth and I just stood by it and then the phone started ringing. <laughs> and, and I'm in a big empty lodge with a phone booth and a phone ringing and then Jesus said, answer the phone. <laughs> so I answered the phone and I said, hello, this is Foundation for A Course in Miracles, which is Ken and Gloria's. And they said, oh, I'm so glad I got a hold of you. I have a friend up there and it's an emergency and I have to talk to her. And this is her name, and this and this, I'm standing in an empty lodge in a phone booth with answering the phone, saying that. And she says, please, I'm so grateful that you were there to answer the phone and everything. I said, okay, what's her name again? So she gave me her name, and then out of my mouth comes, in an empty lodge, just a minute. I'm like, just a minute. I don't even know this lady, and I don't see this lady, and it, the voice said, just a minute. So then I got walked out of the lodge to a road, and I saw three women in the distance slowly walking toward me. And they came closer, closer, closer for a few minutes, and then when they came to me, I smiled and I said, are any of you, and I said the woman's name, and she said, that's me. I said, you have a phone call. <laughs> and it was like, this is just Jesus having fun. He's like taking it away from the five senses in the past. Just listen, follow, don't interact as if there's actually something that you know what's happening. And that has happened so many times where things just flow and unfold. And it, I would never in a million years have even imagined some of those things, but, but there they were. So it was just like him saying, I will guide you, I will tell you what to say or do, put your total faith in me, and let go of your past learning. So sometimes it feels like, you know, you're... Stevie Wonder. You mentioned him, but Stevie Wonder. You feel like you're just happy, like Stevie Wonder, and you're blind to the world, but you're, you're loved, 
you're taken care of, you're connected, you're happy. That was what we wanted all along anyway, you know. But it, it's, it's, it's like, it expands your faith when you keep going through those things. You, your faith grows stronger and stronger. Like Jesus telling Thomas, you know, he takes Thomas, has Thomas put his finger in the hole, and then 2,000 years ago said to Thomas, you know, to the, all the apostles, Blessed are those who have seen and who have believed. Far greater blessed are those who have not seen and believed. He was teaching us, don't put your faith in the five senses. Expand the faith of your heart and, and your guidance, your intuitive guidance. And that's the faith. You know, that's, because when I say we have to trust, people usually say, trust what? And trust who? And like you said, there's so many traditions all over the world, and there's the same frequency that when you travel the world, you start to really feel it in many cultures and many seeming diverse places and people. But it's there. It's there for sure. We went to this concert last night, and I think it was, was it the first song you sang? Maybe you could sing that for us, because we're, he sang it. Second song. It was in English, and, and we're hearing Son of God, and I'm oh, Son of God. And I, I was looking over at Kirsten, and I was saying, Oh, well, that's from a line in the chorus. Yeah, that's what I was saying to her. I said, he's singing, <laughs> he's opening up the concert, singing the lyrics <laughs> from the chorus. I don't know if you can play that, if you have the right... I can sing it. You can sing but it. I need my friend on the hand. A cappella, yeah. I can sing it a cappella. It's just, I turned that, because it's one of my favorite mm -hmm. phrases. I am spirit, holy son of God, free from all limits, saved and healed and whole, free to forgive, and free to save the world. The last two phrases I put aside because they didn't fit on the, <laughs> on the song, but, and I play it with my friend on the handpan, which is beautiful. And it goes something like, <laughs> Sometimes you hear that at a course gathering, but we were just out there and everyone was all swirly and and there it was. So that was so beautiful for us. That was like, it touched our heart. Yeah. 
så blöt att det ja. blir sin spärr. Jag tror vi kan ta ett litet det well this is a, it's an interesting one because it's uh it came from a long process of um especially in my relationship with my wife where i felt um uh there was a moment where i focused a lot on my work and she felt a bit uh pushed away pushed aside but it wasn't my intention at all. I always wanted her to be part of and to envision us traveling together and you know having fun and but there was some there was something in her that 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 I felt didn't want to accept this. And so I felt also rejected and we both felt rejected, no. And so we went through a, a very very intense process of should we be together or should we just like go on our own path? But it was very strange because we loved each other so much. So so we felt like we, we hit this wall, no? And it was super painful. Like I went through a very hard time and feeling this pain and and we even like split for a while and I went back to my parents' house and I was just there for a few weeks just feeling this. And crying and like really going through this pain and um, and finally after a while it, it became clear for me that this is not something that only I am feeling this is very it feels very common you know in my in all my relationships I feel um, there's moments when we just say things that 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 reveal that we don't love ourselves and we don't appreciate ourselves and we don't we feel like we're not good enough no so i i i touched the the wound it was this feeling of i'm not good enough and she's reflecting it to me and i'm reflecting it to her and and it's super painful but it's it's something that we have to to face no and so i i I started playing this music and this these melodies came at that time but there were no words like I, I couldn't put it into words what do I actually want to say and I don't want I don't want it to be like a, a victim kind of song like oh you don't love me anymore like all these <laughs> typical songs that reinforce the thing no so it took a long time it took like a few years to actually turn that melody into words and they came in Spanish and it's funny because they actually came on a road trip I did a couple years ago in my van and I took like two weeks to travel through Spain in the van and it was beautiful because I was on my own I slept anywhere I wanted this is a nice spot I park here spend the night a couple days bathe in the river and I was listening to you all day <laughs> driving and listening to David yes yes and one day I get to this beautiful lake and I meet this guy on the road he was hitchhiking and and I I invite him in and we travel together to this lake and we spend the night in the lake we we make a fire and we we have we spend a beautiful night together chatting and the next day he leaves and I'm there in the lake by my own and I start playing the song again and blah it just comes out and they come in a way that that heal you know in a way that every time I, I sing it it's like oh it's like you know yeah I know they feel it I yeah. see it on their faces <laughs> their faces show it <laughs> so yeah it talks about this pain but in a beautiful way
siento tu dolor, hermana Que yo guardo el mismo sabor amargo Tienes un poder infinito Y no sabes cómo compartirlo Creíste que el oro está en el mundo Cierra los ojitos, ve a lo profundo Sabe bien que estás aquí Y esa rueda va a morir al fin todo mi canto será para ti Con este sonido que me nace aquí Cantaré Cantaré que me vengo lastimando con toda la pena del pasado ya pasó ya pasó creí que lo había perdonado pero ya me duele todo el cuerpo no es amor no es amor ey. Me abro pa' soltar este peso Yo rajé lo que viene el espejo Inocencia Inocencia Que el amor no se encuentra en el tiempo Es incondicional y eterno Presente que ya brilla en el cielo Te libero para vivir este momento Salirnos de la rueda Perdonando El pasado Liberando Las cadenas del tiempo
heals the heart. El amor te sana, sana el corazón. El amor te sana, sana el corazón. Inviting you here for lunch, but I know you do. You're flying out today or tomorrow. Oh, good. So there's no, <laughs> we don't have to whisk you off. I got invited to this hot springs. Oh, yeah. So maybe after lunch. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. They, they're they famous around here, the hot yeah, springs. Yeah. yeah. West Aikik. Yeah. Well, Let's all share our love and gratitude here to have Alex Thank here you at guys. Thank you the very Casa much. de Milagros. Qué bonito, muchas gracias. <laughs> yeah. gracias.